Hey everyone, welcome back. Talking today about Lamar Johnson. And this is actually a really important story to help people to understand just how the justice system actually works or doesn't as the case may be. And it follows along with the topic of discussion that I've had several times on how people can be very easily wrongfully convicted and spend years or decades in prison, as is the case with Lamar, who spent nearly three decades in prison, I believe it was 28 years, and how they will continue to screw you over even after the case has been overturned, as was with Lamar here. So we're going to read an article, and this comes from Yahoo News, but you can find your own news source. It'll pretty much be the same thing. You see no reparations for St. Louis man wrongfully imprisoned for three decades, and that is Lamar right there in court again trying to get compensated for his wrongful conviction, which is not easy at all. A Missouri judge recently overturned the conviction of Lamar Johnson, a man falsely accused of a murder 28 years ago after spending three decades in prison. And of course, you know, that doesn't count the amount of time he spent sitting in jail waiting for his trial. Johnson finally has his freedom, but was offered no financial compensation for the time he lost and the new life he now has to build per CBS4 News. In October 1994, Johnson was convicted in the murder of Marcus Boyd, a man shot to death by two masked men, per AP's report. A key witness, James Elking, said he was initially coerced by investigators to place Johnson at the scene of the crime, but later recanted his statement. The two suspects, James Howard and Phil Campbell, sent affidavits while in prison for other offenses, confessing to the murder years later. Johnson also had an alibi, his girlfriend who testified he wasn't at the scene of the crime. The conflicting credibility of the statements made it doubtful that Johnson pulled the trigger. In 2019, St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kimberly Gardner sought a new hearing based on the new evidence, but the state Supreme Court ruled she lacked authority to seek a new trial. Her efforts resulted in a 2021 law allowing prosecutors to examine wrongful convictions upon new evidence per St. Louis Public Radio. Johnson's case was given another chance, and it took all the way till 2021 for courts to consider examining possible wrongful convictions. Let that sink in. However, Missouri still lacked legislation to give financial compensation to exonerated individuals. Why? Something as simple as the absence of DNA testing. And here comes the loophole. And I'm going to cut away to this so that you can see what the loophole actually is that they're talking about. Many states offer compensation for people whose criminal convictions are vacated. In Missouri, it's very limited and Lamar Johnson will not qualify because the case did not hinge on DNA. In Missouri, that ability is really just non-existent, so Missouri does not provide compensation for individuals who are wrongfully convicted unless they're exonerated through a very specific procedure in which that person is requesting DNA testing, and that DNA test leads to evidence that proves their innocence, explained Tricia Rojo Bushnell with the Midwest Innocence Project. The Midwest Innocence Project has launched a GoFundMe to help Johnson after he was freed. It has already raised thousands of dollars. That's hardly compensation. And this ties in with something that I bring up all the time. As you see here, Missouri is very tight on this. Other states, it's not so bad. But basically, any state where you are exonerated from a long-term prison sentence like that, you have to fight to get your reparations, your compensation, however you want to call it. In this case, they called it reparations. You have to fight for it. And even if you win in court, the state usually still doesn't pay, and you have to take the, the state to court again to force them to pay. It, it's really ridiculous the way this works. So they, they screw you, and then they screw you again. Well, let's finish the article. In some cases, exonerees come back and sue the city. That's what I was just discussing. Often, however, those who don't have the ability to hire a lawyer find themselves displaced upon their transition back into the world. The report says if Johnson's case was handled in Kansas, 
a state that provides compensation, he would have been owed $1.82 million. And Kansas, Kansas, by the way, still would have tried to fight that in court, and you would have had to go through all that rigmarole. Millionaire or not, Johnson says he's going to spend his new life fighting for others who were put in the same position. Good luck, Johnson. I hope I can be an inspiration and that they will continue to fight. Truth finds a way. Not always. That's not always true. I think there's a purpose in pain. To some degree, I have an obligation to try to help others and help them get through what they're going through, he said to St. Louis Public Radio. And I feel for Johnson. I really do. Because this happens more often than you realize. Johnson's case is special because he spent 28 years in prison. Damn near closer to 30, as I pointed out earlier. That 28 years does not count for the amount of time he spent sitting in jail waiting for trial. That doesn't uh, always weigh in. So it's probably uh, closer to 30 years, pretty much. And I, I feel for him. And like I said, this happens all the time. Usually it's a lesser amount of time. But in my opinion, even somebody who's sitting in jail waiting for a trial and turns out to be innocent has been wronged by the state. There's way too many people sitting in jail that are not guilty or have been given really heavy-handed sentences. I know that there's a big argument right now about people uh, going through a revolving door system and that does happen where they pick people up and they dump them back in the street. That does happen but there's also just as many people sitting in the system who have been given ridiculous long sentences that don't fit the crime or are actually innocent. This is a very broken system, and I think it's really important to point out that the initial witness was coerced, that they said that they were coerced by investigators, and that was what James Elking, that he had an alibi, and the alibi was overlooked. If I remember correctly, I believe they were shot in front of his house, wherever he was living in uh, St. Louis at the time, but he was not home. He wasn't home. It just happened to end whatever was going on ended right there doesn't mean he was involved and they really didn't have evidence to prove that he was but managed to put him in prison anyways and now won't compensate him for their mistake as far as they're concerned the paperwork says justice is served and that's it screw you goodbye and it's really important to showcase things like this and for people to ponder that this is your justice system well, it's not your justice system, but it's the justice system that's been set up for you. And you could get caught up in it as easily as Lamar was. Thoughts? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. If you are new to the channel and you're wondering, hey, what the hell is the deal with all the cat pictures? They are strays my wife and I take care of, and images of them in the video actually help with the loading algorithm. If you wanted to help the channel out, or the stray cats for that matter, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps, and we sure do appreciate it. And if that's it, then what more can I say but stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.